Hello and welcome to the three-time award-winning Tough Girl podcast, which is all about motivating and inspiring you while increasing the amount of female role models in the media. I'm your host, Sarah Williams. Throughout the month of March, the Tough Girl podcast is being sponsored by Innovate as part of the March Daily Mile Challenge, which is what it sounds like running one mile every day in March. You can find out more via my social media at Tough Girl Challenges and on the website, toughgirlchallenges.com. We're speaking to a wide range of runners over the coming weeks with new episodes going live every Tuesday and Thursday at 7am at UK time. Innovate is a footwear, clothing and equipment brand for committed trail and off-road runners, fitness athletes and adventure-seeking hikers who push boundaries and stretch limits. It's a British company based in the Lake District. I've been working with Innovate since 2019 and wear all of their gear when I go hiking or training. You can use the discount code TOUGHGIRL20 to get 20% off your next purchase. My name is Rav. I am a 42-year-old mum of three. I live in Leicestershire. I work in London as a management consultant. I also run. (laughs) You run a lot. (laughs) I run a little bit every day. (laughs) What day are we up to now on the run street? I think this is 1,674 incredible four and a bit years five years yeah it'll be five years right in March in March fantastic well that's when the episode is going to be going live (laughs) so there'll be a five-year run streak anniversary happening which will be incredible well what were you like as a little girl were you into sports did you do PE were you a sporty outdoorsy family you know what were your early years like so I come from a very strict Indian family we didn't really have a real push on fitness and PE. You know, my mum and dad are first generation Indians and they came over back when they were very, very young before they got married back in the 70s. And um, they were doing two jobs, trying to make a life for us all at the time. I was not really pushed into doing any kind of sport of any kind, if I'm really honest. I was very much a tomboy. So I used to like kicking a football around in the garden and playing with my cousins uh, and they were all boys. I grew up in a very masculine family. Yeah, I wasn't very girly girly growing up. But yeah, I never ran. It wasn't really me. Were you sort of pushed more down the academic route? Was there quite high expectations on you? Uh, Yeah, very much so. I think, um, you know, my dad was very much like, I want you to go into medicine and I want you to be a doctor or a pharmacist. And when I was like, when I'd got to sort of GCSE level, um, I had picked art as one of my, my GCSEs and he was not happy about it. And I just had kind of smoothed it over with being saying, you know, I can't pick any more science subjects. So I'm going to pick a subject I can definitely get a good grade in. And he was like, OK. And then I picked it again for A-levels. So I did an A-level in art and it was like I had done something quite wrong. And he was like, you're not going to art school. This is not where you're going. You know, you're definitely, if you're not doing medicine now, then you're going to have to go into law because, you know, this isn't going to work, this whole art thing. So yeah, I was very much pushed down the academic circuit. Sports were definitely not on the agenda. When did you start getting interested in health and fitness and running? I mean. I didn't even own a pair of trainers until I was possibly 36. They were just to sort of like go to the gym. My mum wanted to to go to the gym. I'd had like kids. She wanted to get a bit more active. So we went to have a look at a few of the gyms. And you know, some of these big name gyms, they can be quite intimidating for women. I think sometimes, you know, especially if you're new into fitness and if you're body conscious, which I massively was, you know, I'm only four foot ten. Mum wanted to go, so we had a look around at some gyms, decided we couldn't go to a normal conventional gym. She just didn't feel comfortable and I didn't feel that great. So we joined up to a hotel gym that was literally around the corner from our house. It was empty at night, so we used to rock up at nine o'clock, stay till sort of like ten. And I started swimming actually originally before I even properly started using the gym equipment I felt much more comfortable in the pool it was lovely I probably did a swim streak for about a year that was probably my first dabbling at streaking of any kind Uh, you know nothing fast just an hour in the pool every day then I eventually started to gain a bit of confidence started to go into the gym 
And I've still got screenshots, actually. I started my Instagram account to document this fitness journey I was going on because I felt like my Twitter at that point in time was very business focused. So I used Twitter, although now it's quite a lot of it is fitness related. A lot of it back then was to do with business contacts and connecting with people you know that kind of thing and I just felt like Instagram might have been the place to document screenshots of like my bike rides and my treadmill attempts at doing a 5k I didn't tell anybody I'd started this account up so I didn't want anyone that knew me in the real world to know that I was trying to run so yeah that was kind of like my first dabbling with that I think it's really interesting like even just hearing the steps that you've taken because you know, I can definitely see people saying, oh, it's, it's not that big a deal. But actually, the first step was almost you know, not owning trainers, because actually, that's quite a bit. Well, we, I mean, there's thousands of trainers out there. Like, you know, which which ones do you, do you go for? Like, how, how much do you, do you need running or trail runners or gym shoes or lift? You know, there's a, that's literally a, that. I literally went and bought and you'll laugh. I bought the cheapest pair I could find. They were basic black trainers that looked all right and I thought oh these will do I'm not going to wear them that much it'll be fine it'll just be a waste of money whereas like now I'm like going, okay so does this have carbon plating in it do I need it for road <laughs> running do I need it for trail running because I've got like wardrobes full of trainers now talk to me about the running like was this linked to a dream of a race that you have was it just something that you wanted to get into were you encouraged by anybody you know what was the motivation behind wanting to run You know how they say sometimes it's best when you can flip a negative into a positive? This is very much one of those situations. So I have a really bad habit of trying to prove people wrong. I had a member of my family who is now no longer part of my family make a comment about my physique and he basically said, you've been going to this gym for like six months or a year I can't remember the time frame and he just said not being funny Rav you can't tell it hasn't made any difference and I know you're running on a treadmill every so often whatever but I used to be in the army and running on a treadmill is not running at all it's like running downhill and only people that run outside are real runners and you wouldn't be able to do it because you know you'd give up too quick well lo and behold that's all I needed it was like red rag to a ball I was like, who the hell do you think you are? So I didn't say anything. And my biggest thing at the time was I really didn't want to be seen in public. I still wasn't very happy with my physique. Part of what he said pinched because it was true. You know, I did faff around in the gym a lot. I did a bit of a workout. But when you start going every day and you don't follow a plan of any kind or don't have anyone that's perhaps a coach or a trainer to show you how to use certain equipment or what to do I think you can become a bit blase and I became a bit lazy in the gym you know I'd do a bit of a workout but out of the hour that I was there I would probably say 25 minutes was probably a workout rather than but I'd say I'd been in the gym for an hour yeah it really hurt so I decided on the 17th of May (laughs) 2017 that I was going to do a run outside and I remember feeling really anxious I wore a cap because I didn't want anyone to recognize me and I wore joggers they weren't like running leggings because I I thought if I wear leggings outside in public people are going to laugh at my thunder thighs and no I don't want that so I'll just wear joggers because in my brain that made more sense People couldn't make out exactly how overweight I was. I had a mum bod and I wore a huge oversized t-shirt and basically was dressed all in black and went out for this run around my village very, very early one morning. And the circumference of my village happens to be just shy of 5k. So I created a little bit of extra so that I could make it up to 5k. And it probably took me about 45 minutes to do this 5k because I suddenly realised that yes, My village was far hillier than I realised, but I felt so on fire in a good way when I got back home. I was absolutely exhausted. I was dripping in sweat. And yet I had the biggest smile on my face that you could ever imagine. I think that's where I caught this running bug. And not long after that, I 
started to run three or four times a week outside, still very, very early or very, very late, often when it was dark. Yeah, I had a really, really good start to my little running journey, to be honest. Did you ever want to set yourself a running goal? So did you ever sort of think, right, I want to take on a 5K or a 10K or do a half marathon or do a marathon? You know, when did those thoughts start entering your mind? Or was that not until later? Um, Much, much later. I set myself a little fitness challenge for 12 weeks during that summer, along with some of my friends. And for 12 weeks, we did a like a fundraiser. For, they did it for a different charity and I did it for a, my friend's little girl called Isabella. She had a rare form of childhood cancer called neuroblastoma. And I often say Izzy is the reason that I started to run properly and I started to feel like a runner. I basically said I was going to run 200 miles in 12 weeks, which doesn't sound like a lot now. But actually, when you're not a runner, you know, it meant that I was having to run five, six times a week. Bearing in mind a 5K was my absolute limit at that point in time. You know, I'd never run any further. So I did this challenge and it felt so good. And I raised quite a lot of money for Izzy. Yeah, she was at the center of my running journey, really, for quite a long time. And even now, you know, uh, when I reach a huge milestone or a goal, back of my mind because Izzy, Izzy unfortunately is no longer with us but yeah I, I look up often which sounds this is going to sound really cheesy I guess but I often look up to the sky afterwards and just say thank you Izzy because I have so much to thank that little girl for so yeah running so much over that period of time suddenly made me realize I really enjoyed running almost every day I was still taking a break and then I came across this thing called Red January people were running every day and I only heard about it through this Instagram community I was starting to be part of and they'd all signed up early and got the t-shirts and I'm like I really like them I'm like oh wow are we allowed to run every day you're laughing now but I genuinely thought there was this unwritten rule book somewhere about running that you just weren't allowed to run every day like I don't know who they are and where the rule book's at now but yeah I just thought we weren't allowed to run every day so I did my first mini run streak and I joined in with them and it was such a good laugh. I carried it on for a bit more. I think I did 37 or 39 days in the end. I don't actually know why I stopped, but I just did eventually because I was like, well, I don't really need to run today, so I won't. (laughs) But I really enjoyed that whole kind of accountability of being outside for half an hour every day, getting that fresh air, moving my body. The weight did start to drop off. It was 30 minutes without gadgets, 30 minutes without technology in terms of me having to consume data. Just 30 minutes of being outside, completely sometimes in silence, sometimes listening to music, sometimes I'm problem solving in my brain and I'd come back with a solution to something that had been bugging me during the day. Yeah, it just felt really, really good. So I bumped into a guy in my village most mornings because I I think a lot of us are creatures of habit and I'd bump into him running in the opposite direction to me and he had a dog so I didn't know his name he became in my Instagram post known as man with dog and he is actually called Scott <laughs> so, uh, and we stopped and chatted one day and he was run streaking and again it blew my mind because he was on day 900 and something and I'm like how is that even possible how can you get to 900 days that's just insanity (laughs) he said oh why don't you join me to like 100 like do 100 days and join me to my journey so without day 1000 and I'm like I've never done I don't know if I can get to 50 and he said just just try get to 50 see how you feel get to 100 I said okay then I got to day 50 I felt actually really good got to day 100 and I felt even better. <laughs> then I was like, oh, maybe I'll just carry on for a little bit. See if I can uh, get to maybe day 200. Day 200 came along. Might get to day 300. Day 300 came along. And it was like, I have to do a year now because I'm too close to a year. And fortunately, every 100 days, it just, I do a little check-in with myself. I'm like, okay, are we, are we carrying on? Are we, are we going to stop? But actually, it 
it serves such a huge purpose now and whereas the daily run before was a little run around the village now it can be almost any distance you know I've run several marathon distances in that time frame I've done half marathons and I've done lots of trails and interesting adventures in between so yeah the purpose of the run streak has changed significantly from when I first started it but one thing it has definitely done for me is it's still bringing me immense joy and pleasure and headspace and I don't think you can put a value on that. I think that's really powerful actually the fact that you are checking in with yourself how is this making me feel is it bringing me joy and the fact that it is that is what is most important because you know your body you know the benefit I mean do you have days when you do feel you know if if it's your period or something and you're just thinking oh god or especially in the UK you look outside and it's like cold (laughs) and dark and gray skies and it's hitting with rain and it's just like oh do I want to go out and get soaking wet like I mean how do you motivate yourself to get outside on those days when you're maybe not feeling it it's not easy I'm not going to lie I think anyone that says They have enjoyed every single run they've done on a run streak or anything similar or even on a normal run. You know, I don't think it's any different. We, you know, some people do come back from a run and say, oh, that was a bit of a bad run today. I don't think the run is bad. I think it hasn't met the expectation we had set ourselves before the run. So there's a difference. So, yeah, I think the weather doesn't really bother me. Skin's waterproof. Once you're wet, you're wet, aren't you? I don't like wind very much. Wind really scares me a little bit because one, I am small. <laughs> so chances of me getting blown around a little bit high. But um, the thing genuinely that stops me in my tracks sometimes is just pure fatigue from a hectic work day. For example, pre-COVID, I had stands at the national running show for some of the businesses I was involved in and I was getting to Birmingham to set the stands up very very early so there was no time to run in the morning and I was getting back home and it was like 10 o'clock at night and there have been a few runs where you know you really sit there and you think why am I doing this right now (laughs) it's like half past 10 at night I'm putting my trainers on and what I really want to do right now is go to bed but I know five minutes into a run, 10 minutes into a run, I actually come back feeling so much more relaxed and recharged up. Let's talk about the London Marathon. This has been a dream of yours for a little while. Running 26.2 miles, it's a hell of a distance. When did you sign up for the marathon? How much time did you give yourself? And did you work with a running coach? Did you join any running clubs? You know, how did you train for this goal? Pre me owning trainers, so pre fitness rad, the pre kids, in fact, when I was still working uh, as a management accountant, my director of finance at the time, he went and ran the London Marathon and it blew my mind. And I was like, You're doing what? And he said, Yeah, I'm going to run the London Marathon. And I just remember thinking, I'd like to run the London Marathon one day. But I'm going to set myself a goal and I'm going to do it by the time I'm 40. So I was in my early 20s at the time. You know, back in those days, I didn't know anybody else that ran. But it just seemed like this amazing thing, the London Marathon. It's this huge, massive event in the city of dreams, you know. So, yeah, that's where the dream originally, the spark lit. And then, obviously, once I started running, I started to come across more running people started to make friends with people online that were from various running communities. I still had social anxiety around. So you can ask me to go and speak. Like I love public speaking. You know, I've spoken in the National Gallery on International Women's Day before. I've spoken in the NEC before. But it's always been in a very business context. But you put little me into a race or a running community gathering that's not of my control (laughs) and suddenly imposter syndrome kicks in really big so someone like me can't do parkrun because there is nothing about parkrun that I would find appealing it's like a square peg into a round hole it's not something that would have appealed to me so I was like okay I didn't really 
want to do a lot of races. So I became friends with this little crowd and Danny, who is one of my best friends, was working for a charity called Spinal Research. And she said, okay, so what we're going to do is they're going to help you sign up to a few races. It seemed like the easiest way to sort of create this little plan. And, and I remember I sat down with her and another friend called Robin and we literally were like, okay, so you're going to do a 5K race and you're going to do a 10K race. Then you're going to do a half marathon and then you're going to do a full marathon within the space of this year. So they built me a little mini plan and then they signed me up for a, like, I think we did Superheroes in the City and then we did Essex 10K. Then we did Royal Parks Half. And then these were all meant to be building me up to the London Marathon the following April but in between Royal Parks Half and the London Marathon happening the following April Covid hit so obviously London Marathon didn't happen I didn't realize how much I wanted to run London until lockdown happened I think that was quite tough actually I, I think I'd got up to sort of 18 miles in my training so yeah I just carried on running over the summer did the virtual London Marathon then did loads of virtual timed event um, and then I ended up doing nine marathon distances in 12 weeks. I get a bit carried away sometimes with what I think my body can do. How did your body cope with running the longer distances? Was that quite scary or did it sort of come quite naturally? So just before that period before lockdown happened when sort of for the first London marathon I was meant to run uh, didn't happen I got up to sort of 18 miles and I found the training really really hard so every time I was running a big distance, it was the first time I was doing something. So, you know, that 18 mile run was the first time I'd ever hit anything like that. And I never got to 20 miles on that first marathon stretch. However, one thing that did make the training easier afterwards was that I had joined this fitness program called Six Pack Revolution. So I did the program and actually because it was super clean eating, lots of weight and strength exercises along with all of the running I was doing I actually did fantastically well in those 75 days and I became super lean and I did find the running distances suddenly didn't feel so daunting because I wasn't getting as out of breath and I didn't find it as as hard I mean distances are hard no matter how much weight you are carrying as an individual I do think it's slightly less cumbersome on your body if you have less to carry I did find it easier to be slightly faster like I was moving faster without putting in any extra effort so that was 2020 and then 2021 it didn't go ahead either did it do you want to share what happened there <sighs> so I was coaching on six-pack revolution so they offered me a coaching contract so I was doing strength workouts I was doing all of the running you can imagine you know I was pushing my body to I think it's limit absolute limit I was in the shape of my life the leanest and strongest I have ever been was then and eight weeks from London I went out for a 22 mile run I remember it being one with lots of elevation in it and I came back I felt fine following morning got up went out for a run and after about 20 25 minutes you know just near my knee I felt like a slightly burning sensation on the outside and I thought oh doesn't feel quite right next day same thing happened again but after you know same sort of time it was it was always a little bit into the run so every day when I was starting off for a run it felt like I was completely normal and everything was fine but this burning sensation started to creep in so went to see a physio and um, physio basically told me that I had an IT band injury hence why the onset was much after I had started to run and um, gave me lots of exercises to do and the burning became less but it didn't completely go away and then it sort of got to sort of like four weeks before London and it was like okay we're gonna have to make a decision soon on if I can still do this marathon you know this is the marathon of my dreams and I'll never forget the day when she just sat me down and she said okay if you want to carry on run streaking, I'm not going to say no because you're not doing any more damage to your leg. Half an hour of running because when it hurts, you know what stretches you can do and it's stop start. But half an hour worth of running is not going to do you any harm. If you're going to attempt to run, I mean, at that point in time, I was looking at a sub four 
you know, I was training for a sub four marathon. In my mind, I was training for a, not that I told anyone, but I really wanted to train for, to do it like good for age time, you know, or something similar, just to prove to myself that I could do it. And she just said, you can start London Marathon, but I can't guarantee you now that you'll finish it or that you won't have done irreversible damage to your body. And it was the most difficult day I remember. I just was in floods of tears. I was like, but I've trained so hard and I've spent so long to get to this point, you know. To say I was gutted, I really struggled to come to terms with the fact you know, I'm just going to have to defer my place. And um, so that wasn't great. I still went to, you know, cheer my friends on. You know, I was always meant to run with my friends as well. So everyone that I had trained with alongside was running it. And uh, well, everyone but me. What a mix of emotions. Because obviously, yeah, gutted for just like, just, yeah. and But then also probably like happy for your friends wanting to be supported, but also... That that should have been you, like all the training, all the oh. effort, all the hours. Like, you know, I really do get that. How did you pull yourself back, you know, thinking, right, okay, it's going to be another another year. So I've got another to, year. you know, another year. The dream has been delayed yet again. How, yeah, how did you get through, th- through that sort of stage? I found it really hard. You know, I... Yeah, the devastation really knocked my confidence as well. So my physio basically had said, stick to 5Ks, do not go over anything over half an hour up until such a point. And then after Christmas and the New Year, she said, you know, start off by doing a gentle 10K. You can attempt to start slowly building up your mileage from the January. But I realized I actually couldn't. And... I really was like, oh, I just, I don't know how I'm going to start increasing the mileage because I, I would get to sort of like an hour's worth of running and then my brain would stop and I'd be like, no, I can't do anymore because I'm going to get injured again or oh, my leg's going to hurt. You know, you could almost have like phantom injury starts to then, even though my leg wasn't hurting in my brain, I thought it was going to hurt if I pushed it. And then I became friends with Dave, who I call my bearded brother, who is part of my running community who are like an unofficial running club full of misfits. We don't really fit into conventional running communities of any kind, I don't think. You know, none of us are massive racers. We just enjoy running, but we don't perhaps do it in a very conventional way that makes us feel like we fit in with everyone else. So Dave started running with me. and We used to run in the park, started to do more and more loops of the park. And I remember the day, and he, he remembers the day, where eventually I was building up my confidence running with him. We'd chat away and we'd run a little bit further and a little bit further. And then one day I just ended up running 11 and a half miles with him. And the tears that flowed, I then went to Cardiff to go and run with the rest of the running punks. And we, we had a gathering and I ended up doing a half marathon that day just by chatting to lots of friends along the way. You know, you just chat away and... That gave me a huge boost in confidence. I would say that was possibly the turning point of me being able to get my head into the right place. And I also met my running coach, Jimmy, that day. And Jimmy came up with a running plan for me, which allowed me to run streak. He knew the focus had changed from speed and was just, this year's marathon was not going to be anything to do with trying to go fast. I think for me, there was so much gratefulness forgetting there but actually the fear was very much there I remember having a conversation with with Jimmy not long before the marathon and I was just like this is the closest I've ever been to actually running it I didn't actually book my hotel room and you'll laugh I didn't book it until a week before the marathon because I was convinced I was not going to get there take us to the start line oh my gosh (laughs) what are you feeling like so I always wear hot pink lipstick and I have black and hot pink shades that I wear when I run because I'm a glam runner so I had this most amazing outfit to wear and I was like a hyperactive child on the way to the London Marathon start line I was high-fiving strangers I was skipping I've got videos of me literally bouncing down the streets and I'm like I've got to contain this energy because I'm going to be tired before the race has even started and everything was just like I've got to record this 
I've got to capture this as a memory, you know. The most amazing electric day of my running life ever. I will never forget it. I was so excited. I didn't actually clock the fact that we'd started the marathon (laughs) until about 30 seconds later. So I'd gone over what I thought was the funnel to get us to the start line. That was the start line I just didn't realise. And I remember I've got this little video where I'm talking to this guy next to me. Oh, have we started now? And he was like, yeah. Oh, no way. (laughs) It's really difficult, I think, for the first two, three miles to get into any sort of flow or rhythm. Yeah. People everywhere. So you're you're not really running straight. You're sort of like sidestepping and jogging around. It's all a bit. Oh, yeah. You are weaving. So I decided I was just going to run on the right hand side of the road for the entire marathon. And then we got to mile three and all of the waves merge, you know, like the blues and the greens and the reds, all of you merge together. And suddenly it was like, oh my goodness. (laughs) I thought there were a lot of us at the beginning. There are thousands of us here. Where did all these people come from? I remember that first bit. It took about a mile for everyone to properly merge in together. And my mind was blown. I was just like, whoa, this is a lot of people. But yeah, it was that whole weaving in and out of people seeing, you know, I had to take over at least one rhino because I had this thing in my head that if you take over a rhino, you're not doing too badly. You have yeah. to take over someone in a rhino outfit. Psychologically, it was just like, nah, I have to take over someone in one of these outfits. So yeah, I ran that first half on pure adrenaline. The crowds were incredible, but specific friends who hadn't told me they were coming out Aww. had come out at different parts of the, um, the course. And I then realized in that second half that I wanted to really make the most of it. I remember thinking, I can't believe we're at mile 15 already. You know, when it suddenly clocked on to me how far I was into the marathon, I was like, that means it's going to be over soon. Did you hit the wall at any point, you know, around mile 20, 21, 22, where you suddenly felt like crap? <laughs> yeah, there was a couple of points. Psychologically, I struggle around mile 16. Once I hit mile 16, I was fine. But then I hit another one again after mile 24. So I saw my friends at mile 24, uh, my two best friends, Danny and Lissa, gave them the biggest hug. And then suddenly I was just like, OK, I'm now struggling because I know I'm not going to see anyone now till the end. And I've got to carry on. I've got to, I've got to do this last bit. Bizarrely, I then ran for a little bit more, got my head into the right space, ran past Big Ben, going quite well, just about to turn the corners to the mouth. And it was like 400 meters to go. For some reason, I felt like I needed to walk. <laughs> I don't know why. An Instagram friend who I've never met before in real life shouted out, run, run. And I'm like, <laughs> so I ran. <laughs> You're making me want to sign up for a marathon. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not doing that ever again. (laughs) You're not? Would you want to go further? Possibly. I don't think I will ever do a road marathon again. I think it's amazing when people do them. And I think it's great when you can go very fast or you want to go and collect all of the, you know, the big world major stars. That, like, none of that appeals to me. Maybe last year. Had I ran it last year when in the shape that I was in, maybe I would have been different. I'd have had a different outlook. But actually, looking back, if I had run the marathon last year, I wouldn't have felt comfortable stopping and hugging as many friends as I had done along the way because I would have thought, I can't waste any time, you know. (laughs) I would have been clock watching far more. So I think I did it my way this year. I did it in a really enjoyable way for me. So I, I feel like I've met my goals. And it's ticked off now, you know, it's a big life bucket goal ticked. I think if I was ever to do it again, nothing would top that feeling that I had that Sunday running in London. I just don't believe that it could. So, yeah, maybe I'll run a bit further. I'm definitely a trail runner. Um, I love trails. I love hills. I love countryside. I love mud. So, yeah, I don't think that's the end of me doing events. But I do think it's the end of me doing road races. Rav, where's the best place for people to connect with you, follow along with your running journey? Where should they find you on the socials? You can find me on Twitter and on Instagram using the same handle, which is at Rav Dillan. I'm quite interactive. I would love to say I'm really interesting to follow, but really, it's just a lot of selfies and running, really. (laughs) 
with your tongue sticking out <laughs> with my tongue sticking out with shades on and hot pink lipstick and I love I'm the still... hot pink lipstick I think it's awesome and the shade as well <laughs> it's almost like a bit of a it's become a little bit of a trademark so Rav this episode is coming out in March 2023 and it's part of the March Daily Mile Challenge which is all about encouraging women and girls to get outside to move their body to run you know one mile every day And I would love for you just to share your top tips and advice for other women out there who may be thinking, right, I want to get into running, want to do my first mile, want to do a little bit of a run streak, do the 31 day run streak for March. What advice and top tips would you have for our listeners? I would say ignore the pace. A huge thing I've learned during my run streaking is you cannot run streak and run fast every day. That's how to break. And also... I would go and pick some beautiful places to go and run in, you know, places that make you happy. I would also suggest a sunrise or a sunset run. There is something incredibly magic about running at those two times of the day. If you're running very late in the day and it's starting to get dark, just run in very well at places, let somebody know where you're going. I struggle sometimes to get out and so I will ask a friend to run with me whilst I'm running but we might be living in opposite ends of the country so we call each other while we run so you know if you haven't got a running buddy close by you can have a running buddy that lives several miles away and then you just both choose to run at the same time but talk and if you're doing that as a daily thing again speed is irrelevant it's about getting outside and just wear something you feel really comfortable in is another thing Wow, incredible to speak to you. Thank you so much for sharing. You honestly made me think, oh, I need to do another marathon. I need to sign up for a race or something. I'm sure that that will have also inspired our listeners to think a little bit more about what they're going to do with their running journey. Thank you so much. Hey Tribe, I really hope you enjoyed that conversation with Rav. What an absolute inspiration and how incredible is it that she has completed a five-year run streak, which she did yesterday. Absolutely amazing. So massive congratulations to Rav. So everything that we have talked about today will be available in the show notes at toughgirlchallenges.com. So please do go and check it out. I just want to talk quickly about one of the things that Rav talked about earlier, which was around trainers. Because it, when you're in, when you're already doing fitness and exercise and you're in the running world and the hiking world and the adventure world, you probably know a lot about gear because people do like to talk, you know, to talk about it and share top tips and advice. But if you are new to this world, I totally get it. Like, I think it can be really, really overwhelming when you walk into a shop and you've just got this huge selection of trainers available. And I think back in the day, I would walk in and be like, A, which size is going to fit me? Generally, it would be a men's because I've got large feet. And then I would just look for which which shoe is basically in color pink which I really really like and then that will be the trainer that I would end up getting but when I started running the London Marathon which I think my first London Marathon was either 2007 or 2008 can't quite uh, remember one of the things that I ended up doing was I actually ended up going to get a foot assessment done so I went to a company called Pro Feet I think they were based in Fulham at the time but it was incredible they had me on a treadmill they analyse my gait my foot strike how my ankle whether it was I pronate or the other one yeah does my ankle turn in when, when I run absolutely fascinating assessment and at the end of it they basically say these are the trainers which are going to best suit be most suitable for you and the challenge that you are doing and I actually used them again before the marathon dissolves I actually yeah I went down to London and ended up buying two pairs of the trainers exactly the same one to train in and one to run um, the MDS in so that's a phenomenal thing that you can do the second thing I'd say with regards to trainers is you have to test them out for your feet because I'm going to sing Innovate's praises because I've been wearing their trainers and their gear for years now love it it works super super well for me and especially for you know for my feet they are brilliant 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 products but you have to test it out for yourself to see if it works for you and that's the thing with trainers you know you can give as much advice and tips as possible but it is it does come down to personal preference but there is one particular shoe that I wanted to talk to you about which is to fair is my favorite shoe at the moment it's called the park law g280 women's and this is what i wore when i did the welsh 3000ers and when i went and did the outer hebrides so park law the ones i wore were like sort of like this burgundy color you may have seen them on my instagram my instagram stories they are the ultimate road to trail running shoe 
and they are designed to allow you to go from adventures from the door. Now, the 280, what that means is the weight, so the weight of the shoes. So Park Law G grams, 280 grams. The shoes are 160 pounds. And I have to say, these are some of the best shoes that I have ever, ever worn. And it's not just me singing the praises. Next week, we're speaking to Ali Bailey, who's going to be sharing more about running the length of the UK, running from Land's End to John O'Groats. And she wore the Park Law G280 trainers as well. And what I, what I love about them, A, is they're super lightweight, they're quick drying, but they've also got incredible grip. So each outer sole has like 98 of the little uh, cleats, which are about four millimeters in length. So incredible grip. But it's also the fact that you can go from the trail to the road and back again. And when I was in the Outer Hebrides, OMG, I mean, that trail is 50% road and 50% bog. It's unbelievable. Those vlogs are going to be coming out soon as well in the next couple of weeks. So look out for that. Um, But they did a phenomenal job, like highly, highly recommend them. Go and check them out. You will get a discount, a Tough Girl discount. Use the code TOUGHGIRL20 to get 20% off. If you visit Innovate's website, inov-8.com, you can see all of the clothes. It's not just women's, but they have men's, women's, they have equipment and they for basically for running gym and hiking they've brought out a sort of a new hiking range um, over the past uh, couple of months which is amazing so hiking boots hiking clothing hiking bags hiking packs etc which is really really awesome i wear all of their stuff for my hikes from the t-shirts the mid layers to the storm shell waterproof jacket if you're following along with my instagram stories at tough girl challenges you can see what that looks like i'm also more than happy to answer any questions that you may have just send me a dm at tough girl challenges or send me an email sarah at tough girl challenges and i'll try and give you um my best advice and top tips as well new episodes every tuesday and thursday throughout the month of march we are speaking to phenomenal runners of all ages sharing their passion and love for running i hope you get outside and go for a run and if you're thinking about signing up for that race sign up for that race do it now do it today and then let me know which race you signed up for but all that's left for me to say is wherever you are whatever you are doing give it your all give it 110 percent. get after it go for it Believe in yourself because I believe in you. Take care, lots of love, and I'll speak to you soon.